Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Chris Payne. I am Marketing Officer for Parkinson's New South Wales. Uh, welcome to our first Wellness Wednesday session for Active in August. Um, throughout the month, we encourage people living with Parkinson's, their carers, family and friends to challenge each other to be more active while at home uh, or at work or wherever you can really. Um, it's just about getting people with Parkinson's active, the community active together. Uh, during the course of the video, please type any of your questions or comments or concerns that you have uh, into the comment section. We'll endeavor to answer them, if not during, after the session. If the questions you have are personal and you prefer not to write them in the comments, uh, please send a private message through Messenger. Uh, first, please allow me to introduce Parkinson's New South Wales exercise physiologist, Alison Blanks, who will be guiding us through our Wellness Wednesday. Uh, take it away, Alison. Hi everybody. Uh, yes, as Chris said, I'm Alison. I'm the current resident exercise physiologist at Parkinson's New South Wales. And I think it should be Torture Tuesday, but today I'm going to take you through a couple of exercises, just some gentle stretching and uh, balance exercises. As you know, exercise is good for your health. We all know that. And for people with Parkinson's, it's even more important. But firstly, before commencing any exercise or any exercise program, you should consult your GP before going into it. Okay, why is exercise so important for people with Parkinson's? There's some really strong reasons. Firstly, it, it definitely slows the symptom progression. That's the most, probably the most important thing we want to hear. Now, it's not actually stopping the disease, but it delays the effects of the symptoms that you are experiencing. And you tailor the exercise to meet those symptoms that each individual has. It minimizes the risk of adding other illnesses to your Parkinson's. So the last thing you want on top of it is to be having a heart attack or a lung disease or other mobility issues on top of it. So definitely the fitter you are, the easier you're going to manage your Parkinson's. It's also going to decrease your depression and anxiety. Now, that's just not you're feeling sad because you have a chronic illness. Part of the illness makes you depressed and gives you anxiety. So there's two factors coming towards you. Exercise can help alleviate that tremendously. So it is a really important fact to keep active and get moving with it. It also can reduce some of the physical pain associated with Parkinson's. The muscles work better, they've got better blood flow, better blood supply to each of uh, your, the ends of your fingers, the end of your toes. You're not going to have other pain that is caused by lack of oxygen throughout the body. And, of course, being active and having your muscles strong is going to improve your balance and thereby reduce your risk of falling. Falling is probably the highest injury incident of uh, most people with Parkinson's and it can lead to some devastating ongoing injuries along with potentially death if you're very much older. So with a variety of exercises we're using to meet that target, we want to do some cardiovascular. Now that's for your heart and your lungs and your circulation. As I've said, those benefits will all come back into your health. Um, you may think that that's not specific to Parkinson's, but with tight, rigid muscles, blood flow is limited. That's part of the stiffness. Let's improve that blood flow throughout the body. So the cardiovascular is really important. It's also been shown to have the best effect on tremors uh, for a lot of people anyway. Strength, the stronger you are, the easier you're going to be able to move. You're going to get more speed with and power training in that correct strength method. And you're going to improve your posture and reduce your fatigue, which are both factors of Parkinson's as well. Your flexibility and mobility is going to combat that stiffness and rigidness of the Parkinson's muscles and, again, help you use that strength by being more mobile. And balance, as I said, so important. We've got to reduce those falls. Okay, today we're going to demonstrate a few flexibility exercises. Excuse me, just getting into place here. I'll move myself over. Can you see the chair? Oh, you should be able to. There we go, sorry, just trying to position. Now, the first exercise can be done anywhere, even in the car if necessary, the kitchen bench, the lounge room, chair, office at work, wherever you may be. So I want you to sit tall on the chair, lift your body up nice and tall, tall in the neck, relax the shoulders. 
you're going to take one arm and put it on the opposite knee. From there, you're going to turn your shoulders round towards your back hand, using the legs to pull yourself right round. And you should be feeling a lovely stretch through the shoulder, diagonally across the back and in the neck when you're turning your head behind your shoulder. It's a great stretch for getting that back mobility happening. And, of course, you have to do the other side. Now, make sure that you're not giving yourself any pain or discomfort. It should be a stretched feeling. If it's pain, back off a little and hold the position for probably 20 to 30 seconds and make sure you relax with it and breathe. No holding your breath. That will only fight against the stretch itself. Okay. The second stretch is going to be in the doorway. and I'm just moving myself over there. Any doorway you can find and you put your arm flat against the door. Line yourself up adjacent to it and then turn yourself away from where you have your hand. And this can be done in any door frame, any edge of a wall as I'm using here and you're getting a stretch right across the chest. That's to help with that posture. You'll see a lot of people with Parkinson's have that stoop. We don't want that. That's going to give you neck pain, upper back pain, shoulder pain. We want to alleviate it. So lift the chest tall, arm at 90 degrees, and turn away from it. And, of course, you need to go to the other side and do that. I'm not sure you can see me now, but that's the other side, which is great. Now, balance, I'm going to bring the chair back in. Any stable, solid object is fine. A kitchen bench, uh, a strong, sturdy dining room table, a solid chair, and you're going to have both hands. Now, there's lots of levels. Some people will immediately think this is way too easy. Some will think this is too hard. Okay? Talk to me personally. Give uh, Parkinson's New South Wales a call and we'll help you with it. Hold on to the back of the chair with both hands. If you're feeling completely stable, you can lift one leg. Now, you can't quite see my leg, but I'm just lifting it a couple of inches off the floor. And hold it. And if you're still steady there, that's fabulous. You can take one hand away. Now, I use this hand because you can't, um, because you can't see my leg, but the opposite to the leg you're using is the best. So if I had the right down, I'd lift the left hand and vice versa. So keep it going that way. And if you're still steady on the other leg, take the other hand off and just relax with it. Now, if you need a little bit more of a challenge, you can then, if you're steady on the one leg, whichever leg it is, you can try removing both hands and staying still. Make sure you're close to a wall, to a chair, something you can grab onto if you need to. It's really important you don't fall by practising your exercises. Okay, you're going to try and build that up to 20, 30 seconds to a minute on both sides and just improve your balance with that. Of course, repeating both sides, relaxing, breathing throughout the exercises. Now, if you'd like copies of any of these or any other Parkinson's beneficial exercises, we have a little booklet that our info line can give to you, and that number is 1800 644185. And please give the ladies on there, our registered nurses, a call and they can post you out the booklet with a few more exercises for you to do. And I'll hand you back to Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Alison. That was great. Um, plenty of things for people to do while they're at home in isolation. Um, uh, if you have any questions at all, please write them in the comments section or reach out after you see this video. Uh, we did have one that was submitted earlier. Um, Alison. How long do you suggest that people exercise per week to keep healthy? Oh, that's a nasty question to ask me. Um, of any particular type of exercise, if you're doing cardiovascular exercise, which would be brisk walking or a treadmill or bike riding, anything of that nature, I'd probably like 20 to 30 minutes three times a week. However, Perfect. this is my nasty bit. I would like you doing three times a week worth of stretches, three times a week worth of strength work, 
and other things associated. On the days you want your body to physically rest, I want you to be doing your uh, speech therapy progress or practice, sorry, I should say, to really get those vocal muscles working and or let's practice calligraphy or art or puzzle, putting a puzzle together. Let's train those fine motor skills that are in your hand and get those muscles working. So people with Parkinson's should really allocate half an hour to an hour if they have it available, focusing on doing some form of activity and exercise to benefit different symptoms we experience with Parkinson's. I hope That's that answers. Right. So, yes. Um, I think that is it from the questions. But as I said before, I will we will answer questions after this video goes live. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, Alison, for guiding us through the challenging time and offering tools to keep us active and healthy in August. Um, thank you all for joining us. And please, as I said before, if you have any questions at all, uh, contact one of the Parkinson's nurses through the info line on 1800 644 189, uh, or you can reach out through uh, email pnsw at parkinsonsnewsouthwales.org.au um, and take care of yourself. Please look after yourself and remember Chris, to stay active and healthy. Sorry, Chris, can I just add one more thing? People sure. may not know that I do offer personal training virtually online if they're possible, or if they're in the Northern Beaches District of Sydney, they can also contact the office. I'm available for personal training face-to-face um, down in the Northern Beaches and or at, around the North Ride region. So um, please call the office and, yep, they, they can Not a problem. Do I think we'll, um, in the next day or two, share that information, uh, a more detailed information about the personal trainer service that you do offer. Um, and, yeah, if we have any questions at all, please, please let us know. And thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Alison, again. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.